I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to Another Thing. Student loan debt has surpassed mortgages and credit cards as the biggest debt in the nation. Many students graduate from college with debt that can cripple them as they embark on their careers. Ellen Kaloje gathered some recent graduates who are in such a dilemma. Ellen. For many of us, the American dream means going to college, getting a good job, and buying a big house. But for millions of people, that dream is just out of their reach. That's because they're drowning in student loan debt and can't even afford to buy their own place. I'm trying to move out of my, my parents' house, and everything is expensive, and I have to pay back this, these loans that I already have, over 50 grand. After I was done, I had $25,000 in debt. I started out with about $100,000, and it's been eight years and I'm only down to 60 and I still have such a long way to go. Meet Maureen, Julius and Mary Ellen, three young adults with massive student loans, each with a unique situation that led them here, but each one saddled with tens of thousands of dollars they're struggling to pay back. Part of it is that no one is really fully explaining what your loans will be before you graduate. And had I known this information and really had an understanding of it, I don't think I would have signed any of that paperwork. It's supposed to be the norm to go to college, and we are discouraging people because people don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I would definitely say for parents to be much more involved in making sure their, their, their children know that they're taking out money that they have to pay back. Because I, I didn't even really look at it until like my very year, and I'm just like, well, that's a, that's a lot of money that I have to pay back to somebody right now. Julius couldn't take any more loans and had to drop out of college. So he has all this debt and no degree. These students didn't go to the mall to run up charges on a credit card. They worked hard and they learned new skills that will benefit this country, help us build a stronger middle class, and help us build a stronger America. They deserve our support. They don't deserve to be buried in debt. Senator Warren wants to pay for this plan by taxing the wealthiest Americans, and that's why Republicans shot it down last year and then shot the bill down again this past March. Warren vows to keep fighting, but critics say the real problem is that college tuition is out of control and we need to rein it in. Reporting for Another Thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. Now to talk more about student debt in the country and in our area. I'd like to introduce Gabrielle Charette, who is the Executive Director of the New Jersey Higher Education Student Assistance Authority, and Lynette Calfani-Cox, who is the author of Zero Debt for College Grads. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Thank you. Does every, do we all acknowledge that the, the debt in this nation and in the area for students coming out of college is a problem? We do acknowledge that. I think so, but you know, uh, I think we have to put some of it in perspective. If you look at it nationwide, there's about $1.2 trillion in student loan debt. That's a massive amount of borrowing that's gone on. Obviously, second only to mortgage debt in this country, exceeding credit card debt, auto debt, and et cetera. Um, the average uh, graduate, depending on whose statistics you believe, comes out of school, came out of school certainly in the most recent year with anywhere from $28,000 or so to as much as $33,000 in student loan debt. Um, some people are worried about, are we getting to that sort of tipping point, like how much is too much? And I think we should obviously talk some about, you know, what the kids are gonna be studying because um, as we were chatting about earlier, if you're gonna be a social worker, say, or an art history major, um, you, you know, should you be borrowing six figures worth of debt? Probably not, you but, know. Well, but wait, so, so, but if that's your love, if that's what you wanna do, are you saying you can't do that because you can't afford it? Absolutely not. There are so many low cost options. People overlook community colleges. And even if you wanna get a four year degree. So many of our community colleges in New Jersey have articulation and transfer agreements with four-year institutions. You can go to a community college for two years, save on the room and board, then you can transfer to the four-year institutions and in fact many institutions are announcing that you can actually stay at the community college, continue to uh, waive the f fees for room and board and earn the bachelor's degree at the community college location going in state, even just going directly to an in-state institution oftentimes saves families. If you're gonna go out of state, unless you're getting a full scholarship, you're going to be incurring additional cost. So I think we just, a lot of times what we see is the decisions are being made on an emotional level. We're not saying defer your dreams, we're, we're saying 
absolutely follow your dreams, but there are low cost options to do that. I agree. And when you think about telling a 17, 18 year old to either not go to college or, you know, don't pursue a certain major, I think that's totally the wrong approach, especially given the realities of society today. You need a college degree to, to get ahead and to sort of climb the, the corporate rungs, you know, in today's society. Uh, we know that college grads typically earn over a lifetime about a million dollars more than high school graduates. That's, yeah. that's a strong case for, for going to college. I, and I hear this all the time, what they are going to earn over a lifetime. But Gabrielle, they have to, they have to earn 28,000, maybe 30,000, 40,000, even less. Some can't get jobs, some can get part-time jobs coming out of college. That's when the debt is the most onerous. That's when it hurts the most. Maybe it should be scaled. There, there seems to be a problem, especially when people come out of college. Am I overplaying that or is that true? No, oftentimes when you're starting out, um, it, it, it is a struggle. And, and there are options. I mean, if, if they're coming out with, with a large debt, I, I would first of all contact the lender and, and, and see if there's some type of uh, hardship or deferments or forbearances available to them. If it's a federal loan, there are in, income-based and income contingent plans that they can avail themselves of. So th there are options. Hopefully that if they had a private uh, loan debt, they have a cosigner behind them and, and that co signer maybe can step up in that initial period and help them get on their feet. But you're saying you have some secrets, you have some tips that people can use to bring down that debt to zero? Um, not only to bring it to zero, to not incur the debt in the first place. I mean, I think a lot of times families just look at getting a kid into a so-called dream school. It might be Princeton, it might be Rutgers, it might be Duke, MIT, take your pick. And they just automatically say, oh, my kid got in, yes, I'll sacrifice it all, I'll do whatever it takes. They'll mortgage their homes, they'll run up the credit card bills, they'll stop contributing to their 401k plans or tap the retirement assets, and that's exactly the wrong approach. We don't wanna encourage families to borrow excessively, whether it's you know buy their credit cards or their own home or borrowing through the, the, the government or private lenders. Sometimes families need to sit down ahead of time, of course, and plan a lot better and to say, okay, well, what are other options before we go to borrowing? And that's what you were talking about with the community colleges as well, that that's, type of, That's yeah. one option, but there are certainly scholarships, grants, paid internships that the student can get, work study programs, other family resources, whether that's you know the uncle who wants to kick in some money or grandparents over the holidays or for birthday funds, that kind of thing. Oh sure, go after the grandparents. <laughs> Tug at those heartstrings <laughs> if you must, you know. But, but then even beyond that, one of the things that I talk about in College Secrets, my latest book, is about how you can avoid or reduce college costs. And so like for example, if a child is going to go out of state, for example, you really do want to have a really high achieving student who's likely to attract something that a lot of families don't know about. My daughter actually just did this. She got an out of state tuition waiver. So my daughter is a senior in high school. She's graduating next week and she's going to the University of Texas at Austin. Public university and yes, as a New Jersey resident, all in for us, it would have been about $55,000, much more expensive obviously than say a Rutgers, et cetera. However, in her case, she was able to get an out-of-state tuition waiver. Now that's very much Does that save much you as much money oh, as going to say Rutgers or uh, staying in-state? Um, ultimately, we'll be paying a little bit less in her case. Again, this is you know a very talented National Merit Scholar, and okay, she's a yeah, she's a very right. exceptional student. But what I'm saying is that if parents didn't even know to push or to seek or to ask about, say, out-of-state tuition waivers, they might not consider that a viable option. Let Just me get like Gabriel in because she's been nodding her head while you were talking, so <laughs> sure. a lot of this is making sense to you? Absolutely makes sense to me. And one of the things that I hope family, young families who are watching this show consider, I would like every family to walk out of the maternity ward with an application for a 529 college savings plan. Great idea. Start saving soon and early and just a little bit every month. People think they have to have a lot of money. They have to have $50,000 to get started. They don't. $25. Uh, let me plug the book one more time. Thank you. <laughs> college Secrets, How to Save Money, Cut College Cost, and Graduate Debt Free. Graduate Debt Free. That's right. Yeah, and I graduated. There you go. <laughs> Lynette Calfani Cox, thank you so much for being here. And if people want to get a hold of your office, www.hesaa.org. We have a website chock full of materials about going to college, planning for college, saving for college. 
Great, Great. information, definitely. Gabrielle Charette, the Executive Director, New Jersey Higher Education Student Assistance Authority, and I'll plug you one more time. <laughs> and Lynette Calfani-Cox, the author of Zero Debt for College Grads. When we come back, we're gonna to talk to a student, uh, show an example of somebody that's dealing with this right now and what his plan is when another thing continues.